Hello and welcome to another video. So this question is on integration and it's definite integral. However, the argument you're about to or the function you're about to integrate is actually a product of two functions. And remember, when you do differentiation, when you have two functions, you apply the product rule. And if it's a, a rational expression, you apply the quotient rule. Unfortunately, in integration, there is no product rule. There is no quotient rule. So every time you see a product and you need to integrate, you have two options that I know of. It's either you do what you call U substitution when possible, or you do integration by parts. Now, my focus in this video is U substitution. Okay, so it's obvious to me that I can use U substitution. And I just want to show you how to know when U substitution is possible. Okay, now you look at the two functions. Here, I have one function, which is x, and I have the other function, it is sine of x squared. You're going to say, if I take the derivative of the first function, will it contain anything that looks like this? Obviously, the answer is no. The derivative of a polynomial cannot give you a trig function. But if you take the derivative of sine x squared, will it contain something that looks like x? If it is, then that's the beginning of your deliverance. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I want you to know is, okay, this is what you're looking out for. You're looking out for a derivative of this one that contains x. So let's say, let's say we want to take the derivative of sine x, sine x squared rather. Okay, what's the derivative of sine x squared? We'll have, to, we'll have to apply the chain rule, which is the derivative of the outside, which is um, we're going to have cosine. Cosine what are we going to have? We're going to have cosine x squared multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be, what would that be? It's going to be 2x. Now you see that it appears there's x, which is this guy here. So once you know that when you take the derivative of one, it's going to contain the other function, u substitution is going to work. Okay? It usually contains this function or a multiple of the function. In this case, it is 2x. Or, or it's usually that, but not a power. It has to be a scalar multiple. You're multiplying by a fraction or a whole number, and then you know that it's going to work. So what do I do? I'm going to go here and say this guy here, which is the x squared, because what generated this actually was the x squared. Because left to us, if this was just x, well, we can't do anything. But the x squared was good enough to provide us with a derivative that is 2x. And that's where the u is going to be. So let me show you um, several examples. Just look at one function. Will the derivative of one contain the other? If it is, if it's a scalar multiple of the other, whether one or a fraction or a big number, then u substitution is your way to go. Well, you don't need to check if you want to use integration by parts, but for most people taking calculus one, you're not using integration by parts yet. It's just u substitution. So I'm going to stay with u substitution on this one. So let, let me get rid of this and then we just work out what we're supposed to do. So what you do is say, I'm going to let this guy that provided us that derivative we're looking for, we're going to say let u be equal to x squared. So our u, that's the meaning of the u substitution. So we're going to say let it be this x squared because this is what you will differentiate to get x or 2x, which contains x. So we're going to say u equals x squared. And please look at what you need to do. Because this is a definite integral, the boundaries are going to change because you're no longer going to be using x in your differentiation. I mean, in your integration, you'll be using u. So you'll be integrating with respect to u, not with respect to x. Okay? Because x is about to disappear. Now, what is du? Du is going to be 2x dx. Okay? And I want you to look at this. You want to make sure that this x and dx are the only two things standing on the right. On the left hand side, you want to move this two away so that if you take half of this, one half of du will be just x dx. Which, if you look at this expression, okay, you can actually write this expression here. Look, you can write this as the integral from 0 to the square root of pi of 
x, sorry, let's, let's start with, so I'm going to move this closer here. It's going to be sine x squared, and then this x is now beside this, x dx. So it means I can replace this x dx with half du. And then I can replace this with u. So I'm going to have the integral. I'm going to have sine of u, because remember u is x squared, multiplied by, what is x dx? It's half du. The only thing I need to fix now are these two. I can no longer put 0 and square root of pi. Remember to make sure you change the boundaries because if you don't, whatever you do from now on will be wrong. So now let's see what the new boundaries will be. Remember that this boundary was when x equals 0 and this is when x equals pi over 2. But we're going to change that now and say, hey, if u is x squared, what will u be? when x is 0, u equals 0 squared. What would that give us? It will give us 0. What will we get when u is equal to square root of pi? So you evaluate u with respect to x. So let me write it correctly. So what we're going to have will be this. You're going to say u evaluated at 0 will be equal to 0 squared. Sorry, 0, 0 squared, which is 0, and then u evaluated at this point, square root of pi, okay, is going to be square root of pi squared, which is going to be pi. Ah, that's tiny, but that's what I wrote, okay? So your new boundaries will be where you used to have 0, you're still going to have 0. And where you used to have square root of pi, you're now going to have pi. And that's, this is what you're integrating. So do me a favor, move this one half to the back. So let's continue. So this is the same thing as, um, let's say, equal to, this is equal to the integral, one half of the integral from zero to pi of sine u du. That's, now, can you integrate this? Absolutely. You see how we just simplified this? The only problem you may have had was deciding what u could be, and secondly, deciding um, what the boundaries will be. The boundaries will automatically change. So let's finish this up. So if you take this integral, it's going to be 1 half. The integral of sine u is going to be negative cosine u. Okay, that you need to know by yourself. And we're going to evaluate these from 0 to pi. Okay, um, just to save yourself, I would move this negative up before I start evaluating. So this is going to be negative 1 half multiplied by. So this is going to be cosine pi minus cosine 0. Okay. Well, this gives me negative one half of cosine pi is negative one minus cosine zero is one. So this gives me negative one half multiplied by negative one, negative one is negative two. And if you look, if you multiply this by this, you're going to get one. And that's the answer to this definite integral using u substitution. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.